Hello, Ed, and anyone else who's watching this. Um, this is Rick. I just want to take a moment to talk about some of the organization and progress tracking that we'll have for this uh, project on the um, guanidine thiocyanate uh, waste guidance that we'll be producing. Um, I just want to say hi, introduce myself, and show you a little bit about what's going on. So what I'm showing you here is uh, the main uh, tool that I plan to use for organizing our effort. And uh, it's not a full-fledged project manager, but it works for me. It's called the Todoist. I'm sharing this with Ed right now. I can share it with anyone. And the way this is arranged is that we have the, um, the final due date up here so we always know when, when things are finally due. Um, I have a link to the project documents, which I'm storing in Microsoft OneDrive right now. And I have a project tracker that I'll review in a few moments. Uh, finally, I've divided this project into four main phases. Uh, that are highlighted here in bold. Uh, they have s uh, people assigned to each task. Unfortunately, I can't assign a task to more than one person at a time. So sometimes a few of them are duplicated. And so I have one like uh, um, here, pr presentation of report to CDT Atlanta. They have RM and EK here. Um, we can add dates. We can um, add comments to things uh, quickly. So if we had, like, for example, uh, literature review, I might be able to both add a comment that says like hi Ed and I can attach a document say I could say review this document add it here and he would get a notification and he'd be able to review that document and make comments there. Um, when we finish uh, we can add a new step by saying uh, here just put new step and it'll appear at the bottom you drag it up to where you want it to go let's say it's here um, if that step is uh, I'll important I make it a priority by clicking red and when we're done with it we just click it and it disappears um, we can also uh, we can each assign tasks to each other and certain dates that they need to be done and we'll each get a notice in our email uh, um, this is available on the phone and on the web and as an app so that's the main guidance that I, I suggest to use for organizing our efforts we can communicate with this um, if we so choose we can get a communication app as well like twist or slack where we keep all of our um, conversations and communications and file sharing uh, separately but I don't want to overwhelm uh, you Ed with that right now so what I recommend is link the projects I have the link here uh, anybody can click on this I, I suggest we, we share it with uh, folks um, I have files from Ed files from Rick this is just a place to put files quickly if we don't uh, know where we want to put them but otherwise the uh, GTC guidance 2019 project is organized as follows uh, or eight folders uh, we have project planning references and research which already has some documents that I've been reading here and we can both comment on um, we have raw data communication so anytime we have a meeting I suggest we make a small meeting notes report here uh, travel planning uh, previous work that we did a few years ago those files and photos are here um, expenses and purchases and other things that haven't been organized yet are here. So um, we can share this link with anyone else by going share, uh, get a link, and we copy and send that to uh, you know Monty or anybody else, Dave, whoever wants to see it, and we can either give them a password set an expiration date or, or not. Um, that's that part of it. Another thing I wanted to share was my project tracker. I've been making a tracker in um, Microsoft Excel, and it looks like this, and here's how it will work. Uh, whoops, I'll click off of there. So it's, um, there's a hyperlink right here. So it's going to open Excel. Um, it's set to open it up as, as the web version of Excel. So I have the same steps over there in the other uh, to do is set up here. And we have, um, these are the start day. I don't have dates, I just have the day into the project. Um, so if you, for example, um, and this is how many days we think it will take for research options. If I thought that would take eight days I put eight here and you'll see this little bar gets longer and if it actually took eight it would um, it the it it tells you your plan versus how long it actually took and then if it if I turn this to 50% complete this little bar drops down and if I turned it to uh, you know 100% complete uh, this bar would uh, go to the full and so and this bar up here is the average of these percent complete so this is this entire step uh, progress and this is uh, each sub subtask progress I have lines here and I have uh, all the other steps that need to be populated with um, there's some dependencies so of course I can't review the experiment plan until I create the experiment plan 
So um, I can only start this on, since I have this started on day six, take two uh, days, it can only start on day eight. So I'd have to put an eight here. And let's say I wanted this to last, this was gonna take two days, then you would get um, you would get those things here. I have to put eight and two here for expectations, and then it would tell you um, how far you're done. And if I was 50% done, it would fill that in. And we can just tell it, like click on like what, what day it actually is right now. You could say it's day eight, and it tells you um, where we are. And so this would sum and average it. It's a quick way to share uh, where we are on the project and what's been done and what hasn't been done in, in one glance. So um, I've saved that. First use, it's also, of course, in the um, in the guidance, in their project planning. It's right here under Project Tracker, but there's a quick link to it in our Todoist. So um, take a look at this, add stuff or subtract as you, as you see fit, and I think it's a good way to use a tool here. Um, I wanted to show everybody else uh, one last thing, and that is um, an example of a training I can do. So this is, um, this is a website for um, uh, the University of Washington that I uh, put some uh, modules that I created on. And this is for noise-induced hearing loss. So if we go here, uh, this is what an example module looks like. You'll hear my voice, and this is something I created in Adobe Captivate for training physicians to uh, measure for noise-induced hearing loss and occupational safety. So here's an example of it here. Welcome to an occupational behavior online module on more familiar with noise-induced hearing loss. In this case-based module, you will cover the foundational principles of the epidemiology, pathophysiology, diagnosis, and management of work-related noise-induced hearing loss, or NIHL. You will then have the opportunity to apply these principles to a patient case and a workplace scenario. Learn about hear tone audiometry and the use of tools for preventing noise-induced hearing loss. Non-written knowledge checks are interspersed throughout this module to help assess your understanding of the material. Upon finishing the NIHL content, you will receive a certificate of completion and have the option to link to the CDC Continuing Education site to assess accredited CME, CME, and CE courses. By the end of this module, you will be able to... And so this is, examples of this is what I can make, and you can... These are, um, I'll turn the sound down a little bit. These are interactive, um, basically like uh, presentations and it just helps guide you uh, where you are, uh, what you're doing, and I can uh, make these to help people understand uh, what they're doing and for uh, training purposes. I, and there's even quizzes and stuff that people have to pass to get uh, certification to do, uh, to follow specific guidance. So anyway, I just thought the video might help a little more than a phone conversation, so uh, I know it's been longer than I planned, so I'll sign off now, and I look forward to uh, meeting you all in person soon. Take care, bye-bye.